The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am D. John Stanley. In this learning, in this uh, lesson, we will start by looking at the correction of the last assignments. In the last lesson, we were looking at factorization of algebraic expressions by grouping. Here is the first question. Factorize a to the power 4 minus 2a cubed minus 4a plus 8. To factorize that expression by grouping, a to the power 4 minus 2a cubed minus 4a plus 8. We said that when we are factorizing by grouping, we have to factorize the first two terms and then factorize the next two terms. So we take each pair at a time. In the first two terms, we see that the coefficient of a to the power 4 is 1 and the coefficient of a cubed is negative 2. So the only common factor there is 1, which we don't need to write it. Then a to the power 4 and a to the power 3, their common factor is a to the power 3. Since a to the power 3 has a smaller power than a to the power 4. So we factor it. Now, if we take a to the power 4 divided by a to the power 3, it gives us a. In other words, a to the power 3 times a will give us a to the power 4. Then we come here. a to the power 3, that's negative 2a cubed divided by a cubed gives us negative 2. So we factorize. Always remember that if you open the bracket by expansion, it should give you this very expression. For example, a cubed times a is a to the power 4. And then a cubed times negative 2 will give us negative 2a cubed. So it gives us the same expression. Let's come now to the last two. Here we see that 4 is common. So if we take negative 4, then when we factorize, we see that we can have a here. Negative 4 times a will give us negative 4a. And then here we have positive 8. And to multiply a negative number, we need another negative number to give a positive number. So we have negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives us positive 8. And we also said that when we factorize at this stage, what is in bracket, the contents should be the same. If not, then we need to uh, revisit the factorization process. Now that they are all the same, we can factorize it. So a minus 2 becomes a common factor, and we are left with a to the power 3 minus 4. So we have factorized that expression. And when we look at what we have on the screen, uh, we discover that we have the same thing. Remember that multiplication is commutative. So a to the power 3 minus 4 times a minus 3 minus 2, rather, is the same thing as what we have here, a minus 2 into a to the power 3 minus 4. Let's look at the next uh, expression. A to the power a, ax minus ay minus bx plus by. So, ax minus ay minus bx plus by. 
So to factorize, we'll take the first two terms and then the last two terms. Remember that we said, if you choose, you can also take this term and bring it closer to this and then bring this one closer here. But there is no need for that. So we'll just go as we have them here. In the first two terms, A is common. When we factorize using the same technique we were discussing earlier, we'll see that we have x here minus A. Because A times x will give us AX. A times negative A. So here is Y. When we multiply this, we have minus AY. And that's why it's also very important that each time you factorize, you may want to verify to be sure that you have written exactly what you intended to write. Then for these two, B is common, a common factor. So we'll take negative B as our common factor, since we have negative here. And then when we factorize, we'll have X here minus Y. Let's verify. Negative B times X is negative BX. Negative B times negative Y is, negative, is positive BY. So we now have X minus Y as a common factor. We factorize it. And then what we are left with is A minus B. Also observe that if you multiply this, if you expand this, it will give you this original expression. So we have X minus Y into A minus B. That's the factorization. Let's go to the third one. We'll just do that together. We, here we have uh, 10AB plus 4A plus 5B plus 2. So in the first two terms, we see that 2 is a common factor between 10 and 4. Then A is also a common factor for AB. We have A and then this A. So it's a common factor. So we'll factor out 2A. And when we factorize that, we are going to have 2A into 5B plus 2 plus, in this second case, we don't have any common factor. So we factor out 1. 1 multiplied by 5b plus 2 will give us exactly this one. And then we factor out our 5b plus 2 into 2a plus 1. So we factorize that. The next one is question 2. Factorize 64 minus y squared. So in the last lesson, we said that an expression of this form 64 minus y squared is what we call the difference of two squares. This is already clearly a square expression. And then here is a perfect square, which can this 64 can be written as 8 to the power 2 minus y squared. And we saw that when we already write in this form, it becomes easy for us to factorize. We just have two brackets. We take the base here, 8 minus the base here y, and then the very 8 plus y. So that's how we factorize our um, difference of two squares. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so we have the same thing as on the board. The next one is 25 x squared minus 16. So this expression is actually a perfect square also. So we, we write 25 as 5 squared. And then this x squared is also a perfect square. So I will just write 5x all squared minus 16. And 16 can be written as 4 squared. This expression, if we square it, we will get back to this very one. So to 4 squared is 16. So now we have 5x minus 4 into 5x plus 4. So we factorize the difference of two squares there also. Okay, 5x plus 4 into 5x minus 4. Look at this third one. x squared minus bracket y minus z all squared. This is exactly another difference of two squares. Well, this expression in bracket here has to be treated as an entity that is treated together. So here we just have the first bracket. Permit me write it here. In our first bracket, our new square bracket, we have x minus y minus z. And then 
in the second bracket, we have now x plus bracket y minus z. So if you expand that, you have that. If you want to open the bracket, you will have something like x minus y plus z into x plus y minus z. So that's how we factorize that. Just to remind you of the fact that we are in the module Algebra and Logic. We are currently handling the topic or studying the topic algebraic processes. After that, we'll go to equations and inequations, and then we'll wrap up the module with sequences. Under algebraic processes, we've already studied the lesson expansion of expressions a plus or minus b into a plus or minus b and a plus plus or minus b all squared. We've done factorization by grouping and difference of two squares. That's the last lesson. Now we will be looking at identities for sum and difference of two cubes. Then after that, we'll look at factorization of quadratic trinomials where a is equal to 1. Then we'll go to factorization of quadratic trinomials where a is not equal to 1 and also not equal to 0. Then we'll solve quadratic equations by factorization. We'll go to solving. Next, we'll do solving of quadratic equations by completing the squares. Then we'll see how we can do the developing or developing the quadratic formula. Next, we'll have a lesson on solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. After that, we'll have developing quadratic equations from the roots. Then we'll go on to long division and with algebraic expressions, the factor theorem, remainder theorem, factorizing polynomials of degree 3, and we'll wrap up uh, that topic uh, with the lesson solving cubic equations. Again, lesson 41 is identities for sum and difference of two cubes. Here is the plan that we will follow for this lesson. We'll start with the objectives of the lesson. We'll have the prerequisites, then a real life situation, then a learning activity, and we'll go to an application exercise to concretize what we would have learned, and we'll end the lesson with an assignment. Without any waste of time, let's get started by looking at the objectives of this lesson. By the end of the lesson, each learner should be able to establish the identities for the sum and cubes of for the sum and difference of two cubes. Now, what are those concepts that you already know that will be very important and will help you to study this lesson effectively and easily? The learners can already expand algebraic expressions, and that's what we did uh, already in two lessons ago. And then after that, we also the, 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 the concept of combining like terms. Is something you already know how to do that. Now, but let's verify to be sure that these concepts, we are comfortable with them. Now, the first is for us to expand x squared plus 2 into x minus 3. To do that expansion, we will use that idea of FOIL. First terms first, we multiply the first terms of the two binomials, and then after that, we'll go to the outer terms, and then the inner terms and the last terms. So we have x squared plus 2 into x minus 3. The first terms of each binomial we multiply x squared by x, it gives us x cubed. Next, we go to the outer terms. So we have x squared times negative 3, we have negative 3x. Then the inner terms, 2 times x, give us 2x. Then the last terms, we have 2 times negative 3, we have negative 6. Combining these like terms, combining these like terms, we will have x cubed. Thus, when we multiply this, we have x cubed. We multiply this, we have 3x squared. x squared times 3, we have 3x squared. Yeah. 
and then this one gave us 2x and then minus 3. Okay, so we have 3x or rather x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. It stays that way because we don't have like terms to combine. So we have that. Explain why the answer cannot be further simplified. They couldn't be further simplified because there are no like terms. This term is, in, uh, is with the power 3, power 2, the variable here is to the power 3, power 2, power 1. And we have only one constant term, so we just leave it like that. So in that expression, there are no like terms to be combined, so they remain, the expression remains the same. So let's look at this real life situation, which will give us an idea of how this lesson can be used in real life. Nafti and De are members of the mathematics club. They are determined to create a game. They came up with the, the following idea. Take any two numbers and manipulate them in different ways, but the result must be the same. So they tried 2 cubed plus 5 cubed and got 133, but could not find another way to manipulate 2 and 3 to get the same answer, that is 133. So how can we help Naftiande to get this very result of 133, but not using 2 cubed plus 5 cubed? Which other way could happen or can we do to get the same answer? So just reflect on that. Uh, if you can't get the way out, just know that towards the end of the lesson, we'll revisit this uh, situation and then we'll get uh, a response to that. So let's continue. Now we'll run to look at a learning activity. Let A be equal to 3 and B equal to 4. Here are the instructions for the learning activity. One, evaluate the expressions A plus B into A squared minus AB plus B squared and A cubed plus B cubed. Next, we'll compare the two results and then we'll expand and simplify a plus b into a squared minus b a b plus b cube b squared rather based on the results in one two and three what is the conclusion that we can draw and then five replace b with negative b in the active in the identity in four above and hence deduce an identity for a cube minus b cube Okay, let's look at the solutions to the, the learning activity. Again, A is 3 and B is 4. So we are expected to evaluate uh, the expressions that are given. If we start with this second one, A cubed plus B cubed, what we will have is... Since we are told that A is 3, B is 4. So now, a cubed plus b cubed means 3 cubed plus our b, then 4 cubed. This will be 27. Thus, remember that uh, 3 cubed does not mean 3 times 3. It means 3 times 3 times 3. You multiply this base by itself repeatedly the number of times we have the power. Plus, here we will have 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 times 4, that gives us 64. When we add, we have verse 1 and 1 over uh, 8, 9. So we have 91 as the result. Okay. So we are also expected to do the same by using this other expression. So let's do that together. This one we've already obtained, and it is here. But now, in the next expression, we have a plus b into a squared minus ab plus b squared. If we substitute a as 3 and b as 4, and simplify, we will have exactly the same answer. That's 91. 
So compare the two results. What we observe is that the two answers are the same. The results are the same. Here is 91 and there is 91. So they are equal or they are the same. Now, next we are expected to expand and simplify this expression. So we have a plus b into a squared minus ab plus b squared. When we expand this, we multiply a times every term here. So let me put it here. a times a squared gives us a cubed. a times negative ab gives us negative a squared b. a times b squared, we have ab squared. b times a squared, I can write it as plus b a squared, but multiplication is commutative. So if I put it as a squared, we are on which term? A times this, we have this, this, we have this, we have this. So this one we can write a squared times b. Then we say b times that, we have negative a b squared. And finally b times b squared will be b cubed. Now let's look at terms that are like terms. a squared b minus a squared b and a squared b. They are similar. So this one can eliminate that one. a squared a b squared minus a b squared. They are the same. So they go up and then we have a cubed plus b cubed. So if we expand that's what we, we obtain. So we, we, we've obtained that these two terms eliminate each other. These other two terms go away. And we have a cubed plus b cubed. So based on the results of 1, 2, and 3, what conclusion can we draw? Now, the first thing we discovered in 1 was that when we evaluate uh, this expression using a as 3 and b as 4, it gave us 91. When we did for this expression, it also gave us 91, which suggests that a cubed plus b cubed is the same as this. But to make things even more concrete, we just expanded this and obtained this, which means that these two expressions should be the same. And since they evaluate to have the same expression, it means that a cubed plus b cubed, we could say is equal to this. But you see that I've used a symbol here that is new. We've not used that in the other two lessons. The reason is because this expression is not only equal to this, but whatever you substitute as a number here, it will evaluate to the same answer as the one, the expression on the right hand side. So we use this symbol to show identical. It means that the two expressions are actually uh, identical. So now next, we are expected to replace b with negative b in the identity in 4, or rather in, in 5 above, and hence deduce an identity for uh, a cubed minus b cubed. So we already have this expression in the last slide, that a cubed plus b cubed is equal, is identical to this. So when we have b, we will replace it with negative b. And we know that when we do that, we will have a cubed plus negative b all squared. When we come here, we'll have a plus negative b, which is the same as a minus b. Then we open the brackets, a squared, we just write it. We replace this b with negative b, and this other b with negative b. When we simplify, we have this. So let's observe some few things. When we add a cubed plus b cubed, here we add a plus b into a squared minus a b and the rest were positive. When we have a cubed minus b cubed, it is identical to here now we have a minus b, and the rest are positive. So this sign changes from negative to positive, from negative here to positive here, and this one from positive to negative. That's the way you may want to remember it. Okay, so what can we retain from this lesson? First, an identity is an, in, is an equality relating one mathematical expression, A, to another mathematical expression, B. 
such that A and B produce the same value for all values of the variable within a, a certain range of validity. Range of validity just means that there may be a certain number, a set of numbers within which if you select your number, the expressions will all give you the same answer. And we call it a range of validity. The range within which the values of the variable are valid. Okay. Secondly, an identity is represented by the symbol. This symbol, I earlier said that. And the identities for sum and difference of two cubes are a cube plus b cube is identical to a plus b into a squared minus ab plus b squared. While a cube minus b cube is identical to a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, all of this can be concretized, can, if cannot make sense unless we concretize with uh, a, a series of questions. So let's look at this application exercise. The first question is for us to factorize 8x cubed plus 27. Okay, so if I write here, a cube plus b cube is equal to this. So if they give me a question, 8x cubed plus 27, the first thing I want to write is to write it in this format. I know that 8 is the same as 2 cubed. x cubed plus 27 is 3 cubed. So I can write as 2x all cubed plus 3 cubed. So my a is 2x, my b is 3. So I can write now in this format a 2x plus 3 into 2x squared. 2x all squared minus 2x all times 3 plus 3 squared. So we have 2x plus 3 into 4x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we would have factorized to have those two factors. So we have exactly the same thing on the screen as on the board. And that's the procedure. So the first thing is to just make sure you write whatever is given you in a form a cube plus b cube or a cube minus b cube as the case may be. So let's look at this next one. <clears throat> if we look at this expression, it's a bit, let me just show you the first step. We have three minus eight one, y cube. The first thing is that this 81, if I want to write it as a number to a power 3, it will be a bit difficult. But I know that 81 divided by 3 gives me 27, which we already know how to express. So I will factor out 3 first. So I have 3 into 1 minus 27 y cubed. So we have 3 into 1 is the same as 1 cubed minus 27 is y cubed, I say it's y, uh, let me put this in square bracket, 3y cubed. So now it is in this form, this portion in the big square bracket is in this form, except that we are using now a cubed minus b cubed. And if we use that expression that we would have a, a factorization, we will have 3 into 1 minus 3a, 3y, all into 1 plus 3y plus 9y squared. Next, we have 3d cubed minus 24. So again, the 3 here will be factored out because 24 is not a perfect cube. It's not a, uh, we cannot have it exactly as 3 to, uh, a to the power 3 or b to the power 3. When we factor, we have d cubed minus 8, which is d cubed minus 2 cubed, which we can then uh, factorized to have this. So it's similar to the one we just did. Then now we have 2n cubed plus 27 2 plus 40, 54. Again, we see that 2 is 2 no, neither 2 nor 
54 is can be raised to a power 3, can be expressed as a number to the power 3. So the first idea is just to factorize 2. And we have 2 into n cubed plus 27, which we can factorize to have this. Okay, let's go now to the real life situation. They tried 2 cubed uh, plus 5 cubed and got 133. And the challenge was for these two numbers, 2 and 3, to be manipulated in another way to have 133. And we were expected to help both of them develop the game. We've already seen that when we have the sum of two cubes can also be obtained by the two numbers added together into the, uh, the square of the first plus the square of the second minus the product of the two numbers. So we can simply say two cube plus three, five cube is 133, while that very two cube plus five cube can be written as two plus five into um, two squared minus two times five plus five cube. So the number here is supposed to be five, not three. And so when you simplify this, you have 133, which is exactly the same number they obtained when they did this. So it means that their game can be uh, established that way. Okay, to end the lesson, here is an assignment that you should copy. You will copy and then do it later on. And we'll look at the correction in the next lesson. That brings us to the end of the lesson. And in the next lesson, we will be looking at factorization of quadratic trinomials, where A is equal to 1. Un tege si ma tege yop, un tege minga ma tege nyum, un tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, eso kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike, Tam tam a tongue, tam zabike, tam 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 a mote, tam zabike, mane tam bianinya, ne injubiayen, 